Hi there. This is Istanbul, formerly Constantinople, but more about that in a minute. So my room there doesn't look like much, but in the practical sense, it is a pretty good room. It has an amazing shower, a comfy bed, super fast Wi-Fi, great location, and a cheap price. So the location is very close to many of the major monuments in Istanbul. I'm going to walk over to them. In the course of this video, you will see quite a range of uh, different neighborhoods here from the small little cobblestone lanes here to the huge uh, plazas and parks here in the Sultanahmet part of Istanbul, the European side of the city. We got some traffic here. Man oh man, it's looking bad. Wow, what's going on? So other than the traffic, then this is a really uh, pleasant neighborhood with lots of great uh, restaurants. The Turkish flag there. And so, in the course of walking over to these massive monuments of history, then I want to provide some context and hello, talk about the uh, history hello. of this part of the world. Now, this is going to involve talking about Greek history. In the past, when I've discussed Greek history in videos of Turkey, then some people have been annoyed. But this is like getting annoyed at somebody discussing Native American history in the United States. Of course, the Native American peoples lived in North America for thousands of years until the Europeans arrived and destroyed their culture and conquered them in battles and spread disease and all of that horrible history. Well, the history here is similar in uh, many ways in that the Greeks lived in Anatolia, the peninsula where Turkey now exists. The Greeks were here for thousands of years until the Ottoman Turks arrived and ultimately conquered Constantinople. This is Constantinople, the capital of the or was, I should say, of course, the capital of the Eastern Roman or Byzantine Empire in 1453. Now, the uh, Greeks were not innocent victims because they came here and conquered the Persians. And so I want to start with the Battle of Marathon. So, most people know what a marathon is. A distance that you run, 26.2 miles. Well, the marathon run is based on the Battle of Marathon. The Battle of Marathon occurred in 490 BC. More than 2,500 years ago, 
when the Persians who occupied Anatolia here, as well as other people, including Hellenistic or Greek people to some extent in uh, Anatolia, the Persians were threatening Greece and they attacked in 490 BC at the town of Marathon near Athens, approximately 26 miles from Athens. Now this battle was an absolutely momentous moment in history that would have shaped world history from then on if it had gone another way. The Greeks were vastly outnumbered by a far superior Persian army. However, the Greeks won through various tactical means. And a runner, so the legend goes, although it very well might not actually be true, but the legend is that a professional long-distance runner ran from Marathon to Athens to inform the citizens of Athens that the Greeks had been victorious against the Persians. If the uh, Persians had won, history would be vastly different because after this time period, 490 BC, with the Greek victory, then you had the classical period of Greece when the Parthenon was built, the famous Greek philosophers of Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and Alexander the Great. So, SPAA, SPA. Socrates was the teacher of Plato. Plato was the teacher of Aristotle. Aristotle was the teacher of Alexander the Great. And so, uh, throughout that uh, period, then this was the high point of Greek culture, of philosophy, art, science, theater, all of this uh, stuff that greatly influenced Western civilization. Wow, what is going on with the uh, traffic? Crazy. So, here we have, of course, a mosque. Now, I'm not exactly certain if this is the Blue Mosque or not. Here's a, a sign. Sultanahmet Kami. Kami means mosque. There are a number of uh, mosques and they look quite similar. I'm not sure for certain which is the Blue Mosque, although I think that I will recognize it when I get in front of it. But uh, part of the point of this whole history discussion here is so that when you see these buildings you have a better understanding of the history behind them because you have all these huge buildings all clustered together but they are all from very different time periods very different uh, civilizations so the Persians were threatening Greece Greece won the Battle of Marathon in 490 BC, however, that was not the end of the uh, war by any means. The Persians continued to attack and attempt to subjugate, take over Greece, and succeeded to varying degrees, taking over various Greek islands. And so the father of Alexander the Great was King Philip. And King Philip made it his mission to push back the Persians in order to eliminate that threat against the Greek Empire. King Philip united Greece, of course Macedonian, Greek Macedonian. The Macedonians were considered by the Athenians to be kind of a barbaric northern tribe, but under King Philip, the Macedonians conquered the rest of 
Greece and united Greece at that time. But King Philip was assassinated and his son Alexander, 20 years old, became the king. He decided to carry on with his father's mission of attempting to conquer the Persians and turn Anatolia, the Asian side of Turkey. Here we are on the European side, but it is just a tiny little portion of Turkey. The rest is considered to be the westernmost point of Asia. And so Alexander the Great went on to be one of the greatest military commanders in world history, undefeated in battle. He succeeded tremendously in conquering the Persians. Over the next 12 years of his life, until he died at the age of 32, then he continued pushing eastward all the way to India and then into Egypt and North Africa and conquered a vast area. So, you have various mosques including right here, the Hagia Sophia. You can see the minarets, but those minarets were added much, much later after the Hagia Sophia was built. The Hagia Sophia was built as a Christian cathedral. Construction began in the fourth century and it was completed in the 6th century. As you can see, an absolutely monumental building. At the time, the largest open space in the world, inside the church there. And so, what I'm talking about now is leading up to why this is here. So Alexander the Great swept through this part of the world, modern-day Turkey, Anatolia, the Persian Empire that existed here at the time, and conquered and basically turned this whole region Greek, and it continued to be Greek for many, many centuries. So that was in the mid-4th century BC. This was built from the 4th to 6th centuries AD. The minarets were added, I'm not sure of the exact uh, date, but after the fall of Constantinople in 1453. So here you have two very far removed phases of history from the original church to the minarets added by the Muslim Ottoman Turks. And so this whole area became Greek and other people, cultures mixed in as well, but it was no longer dominated by the Persians. Now along comes the Roman Empire and uh, I gotta watch that I don't get too lost on tangents, for one thing, you know, I'm no expert, I just kinda know the basics, but uh, of course the Roman Empire conquered many Greek cities, but there was also a collaboration between the Greeks and the Romans and jumping forward and jumping over a lot then you have the fall of Rome, the last Roman emperor deposed by Germanic invaders from the north, and that was the official end of the Roman Empire. 
But out of the ashes of the Roman Empire emerged a new empire, the Eastern Roman Empire, or the Byzantine Empire, which was Christian. And they moved their capital city from Rome to Constantinople, named after Emperor Constantine. And thus, this became the center of this new emerging developing empire and really kind of the uh, epicenter of Western civilization, you could say, of the uh, Roman Empire and everything that went along with this new Byzantine era of the arts and science and philosophy and culture and all this kind of stuff. So the city, basically a Greek city at that point, and it would have been such a phenomenal place to walk through with buildings such as that. Of course, remove the mosques. Those wouldn't come for more than a thousand years. And so the Byzantine Empire thrived for the next thousand years until 1453. The Ottomans had been invading and occupying various parts of Anatolia before then. Constantinople had basically become a island of Byzantine Greek culture and the surrounding areas with the Ottomans approaching, dominating, taking over, Greeks still existing in various uh, parts of the Anatolia Peninsula, but... Okay, let's uh, get out of here and uh, go see more of Istanbul. I will be showing various uh, parts of this region of Istanbul, including the Greek Basilica Cistern, a pretty fascinating place. And so you have here these ruins that I don't know when this was built, but it looks to me like it was probably from the Byzantine era. Which bazaar? I see. Over there? Yeah. Where you from? I will walk over there later. You're making movies. I'm, yeah, I'm recording a video right now talking about history, so. Okay, thank you. Shop? United States. American. Do you like shopping? No, thank you. Carpets? No, thanks. Have a nice day. You too, man. So the city was incredibly, incredibly well fortified. With multiple different uh, defensive walls, it had been attacked many, many times and in fact conquered at one point and then regained by the uh, Byzantines and then finally it fell to the Ottomans in 1453. And then everything changed. The Byzantine Empire collapsed and the Ottoman Turks took over Anatolia. And are still here, of course, today. The modern state of Turkey is what remains of the previously much larger Ottoman Empire. The Persian Empire still exists as Iran. Okay, so uh, that pretty much concludes the history lesson for now. I just wanted to uh, show a bit more of this uh, interesting uh, part of the city. So much going on. Amazing shopping. Restaurants. 
And yes, you can get a beer in Istanbul. Had one last night. Harem shop, interesting. It must mean something different from a man in his harem. The Blue Mosque, Istanbul. The mosque is closed to the visitors until 2.30. It is 2.45 right now, so maybe it's open. I'm not going to go inside. As you can see, there's a long line and I've been inside previously. This is my fifth time to Turkey and I forget but my uh, third or fourth time to Istanbul. The Blue Mosque in Istanbul, also known by its official name, the Sultan Ahmed Mosque, is an Ottoman-era historical imperial mosque. A functioning mosque, it also attracts large numbers of tourist visitors. It was constructed between 1609 and 1616 during the rule of Ahmed I. And so this is the line that I have no interest in waiting in. Unfortunately, not the best time to view it from the outside because it is apparently going through some sort of renovations, a uh, cloth covering up the exterior and scaffolding. But it is undoubtedly an absolutely beautiful building and the most important mosque in Istanbul. So, let's continue our wanderings around Sultanahmet. Go search for the Basilica Cistern and see what else we find. There is so much to see in the city. It is absolutely one of the greatest cities in the world. Istanbul blows away many of the major cities of Europe. Here, of course, still part of Europe. And again, the Hagia Sophia. That is quite a incredible view. So you can see the minarets a different color from the rest of the building. And also a long line to get into the Aia Sophia. Let's jump over the line, get on the other side. Keep on exploring. So I just had a conversation with a local man here, a carpet salesman. Of course, they like to uh, get you into conversation, Hello. but he actually gave me some useful information, which is that apparently there's going to be a very long line for the Basilica Cistern right now. I'm going to walk over there anyways and take a look. But he said that right now, in the middle of the afternoon, is when all of the cruise ships have docked and so there are large crowds at all of the uh, sites, whereas in a couple of hours it will be less crowded. But let's take a look. I think this is it and it isn't so bad. Let's give it a try. And we have some information right here. The Basilica Cistern was constructed by Eastern Roman, I mentioned the Eastern Roman Empire, or the Byzantine Empire, Emperor Justinianus, 527 to 565, and so the cistern was constructed in 542 AD to provide water requirement of the Great Palace. Due to the brilliance among the marble columns arising within the water, it was called as Yerabatan Cistern by the public. The name Basilica in foreign sources was said to come from the Ilias Basilica being close to the cistern. Two Medusa heads, so that is the really interesting part about it. 
used as a block under two columns at the northwestern edge of the cistern, are one of the masterworks of sculpture of Roman age, although more Greek. Eastern Roman Empire was predominantly Greek. So there you can see it. The massive water tank for the city and for the palace. I was mistaken. This is the line for tickets. That is the entrance, but first you gotta wait here. And here we go, into the cistern. It was 190 Turkish Lira, that is about $10 US. It is certainly quite crowded, but once you get down into here, it opens up a bit. About a 30 minute or so wait in the line. And it is a very moody feeling down here with the low lighting, the columns, water, just a foot or so, lots of coins in the water. You could get rich collecting all that stuff. Looks like lots of one lira coins, which is about five cents. Water dripping from the ceiling. So, let's go find the Medusa heads. Medusa, of course, being part of Greek mythology. The snake-haired witch. Don't look her in the eyes, or you will turn to stone. So there is the Aia Sophia. Right here are ruins that I walked past and remarked they look like Byzantine Greek ruins. I hadn't realized that was actually the roof of the Basilica Sister. I thought it was a bit more of a walk away. It's right here next to everything. 
So that is where we were, down in there. Where I stopped at first and started standing in line is actually the exit. The uh, entrance line is over here and you go inside through there. So it was a long line and it was crowded inside there. It is definitely worth considering going at a quieter time, but I just wanted to do it now while I was here. Today is a Friday and so I think that, that is increasing the crowds. Friday is the Muslim holy day. So let's go uh, wander around a bit more, see more of this incredibly beautiful and historic city straddling Europe and Asia. Hello. Do you serve beer? You do serve beer? Okay. Uh, table for one? Maybe? Thank you. Hi. Hello. Beer for one? Yes. You have beer? Yeah, we have beer. Great. Okay, I was getting hungry. Now is a good time. So this is the beer. Ephes, the national beer of Turkey. In an interesting cup. It's cold, hits the spot. A totally average beer. I think I'm gonna go for this. Turkish style chicken. It looks good with that sauce there. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. You too, sir. Thank you. Hope to see you next time. Thanks a lot. Is it the Blue Mosque or different? This one, Hagia Sophia. Blue oh, that's the Hagia Sophia. Sophia. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Blue Mosque is farther. Yes. Thank you. So there you go. The call to prayer coming from the Hagia Sophia. A controversial decision for the president of Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, to turn the Hagia Sophia back into a mosque. It was kind of a gesture of peace for it to be a museum for many years, and then just recently it was turned back into a mosque. So these are obviously touristy restaurants with touristy prices, but uh, it is still an experience. The dish that I got, the uh, Turkish chicken, was really good. They are kind of a recreation of the uh, traditional Turkish style. And I love the decor of uh, the Turkish restaurants with all of the tapestries and everything on the walls and the uh, sit-down tables. So here we have one of the ice cream sellers and they do this whole routine when you go to get an ice cream, especially if it's a kid, in which they joke around with you and uh, it takes a while to actually get your ice cream cone. Let's see if somebody goes up to him. In the meantime, Quite a presentation of some sort of flaming dish. What is in there? Yes, we have table. Hello, YouTuber. Hello, sir. How are you? Thank you. And you? Pretty good. You know me? <laughs> no. I don't know you, 
Yes, you got it. But I can follow you, don't worry. Gabriel Traveler. Okay, the big reveal. What is inside? Maybe a monkey? A penguin? Well, we're not gonna find out, I guess. And so I wasn't actually expecting the uh, guy there to recognize me. However, last night, then a guy did. I went to this restaurant where I showed uh, at the beginning of the video there, and I was uh, done eating, and there was a woman behind me who had an American accent, but I had heard her on the phone speaking in a Slavic language. Sounded like Russian, but I wasn't sure. And so after I was done, she was still there, and so I struck up a conversation with her. She had an interesting story. She was a uh, airline stewardess who had the benefits of being an airline stewardess and getting practically free flights even though she worked for uh, Southwest in the United States and they don't fly out here but you get uh, deals with other airlines and so she was uh, from Russia originally born in Russia and moved to the US when she was nine to Colorado she was visiting family back in Russia and made a spontaneous decision to come to Istanbul so we got to talking and I mentioned that I was a youtuber and the uh, waiter overheard me and said that's where I recognize you from and so he had seen my uh, videos and I guess he'd been looking at me thinking that I looked familiar and hadn't figured it out and then he showed me his phone and showed that he like watched a bunch of my videos Probably the uh, different haircut kind of threw him off. Okay, so I'm now just going to wander through no particular destination, just uh, walk through this area. I think that I'm headed towards the Grand Bazaar, the largest marketplace in the world. And as you can see, Old stone walls, more of the historic old town. This clock has two minutes off. It is 5.11 p.m. And that is one reason why I'm going to wrap up this video soon, because I plan to edit and then upload this video this evening while I have the fast Wi-Fi, because tomorrow I am catching a flight. You will find out where soon. A big hint, my favorite place in the world, not Greece. But let's get a view of the sea, the water. I believe it will be the Bosphorus out here. You have the uh, Sea of Marmara nearby and the Bosphorus separating the European and Asian sides of Istanbul. There it is. And then there's the Golden Horn. So I'm not sure exactly what we have here, but uh, anyways, get a look at the water. And so we are almost at the intersection of the three places that I mentioned. Down here is the Sea of Marmara. This is the Bosphorus, separating the Sea of Marmara and the Black Sea up there. And then here is the Golden Horn that uh, bit of water going up right there. And so this is basically where the Golden Horn and the 
phosphorus connect. Let's get the walk. So across there you can see Galata Tower. There's the Galata Bridge down here. That is not the Asian side of Istanbul. That is across the Golden Horn going out that way. There is the Bosphorus and the Asian side of Istanbul out there. You can catch a ferry over there. It looks like this is the uh, ferry terminal. And so you could catch a boat across the Golden Horn, across the Bosphorus, or just walk right up there to the Galata Bridge. That is the area where I stayed the last time that I was in Istanbul. Across there, towards the uh, Istiklal Street. The main pedestrian shopping street. And Taksim Square. But I definitely prefer this side. It is quieter, especially where I'm staying there in those nice little quiet lanes. And it is the old town, the more historic area. The Istiklal Street is a much more modern scene and uh, a really busy place. You can see a massive mosque across there. Boats going out into the Bosphorus. Looks like they're shooting something here. She said, together we'll also be visiting the most popular spot in Istanbul, in English. So she's also making a uh, travel video, I guess. And so Galata Tower is the highest point there on top of the hill. A very historic old tower. And here, more mosques, more corn, more chestnuts. Whatever kind of nuts those are, I guess chestnuts, something like that. Pretzels or some kind of a circular bread. So that is just a taste of one part of Istanbul here. So much to see in the city. I've been here many times by now and I'm sure we'll come back again. But tomorrow, a flight, one hour and 15 minutes direct to where I'm going next. See you later.